Hi, Vince here, and check out this unusual fault on this little Lamborghini RC car. It's a nice looking little thing. This is brand new, so this is a fault out of the box. It will seize up after about three seconds every single time. It isn't intermittently working for longer, like sometimes 30 seconds, sometimes one second. As soon as you turn it on, you've only got about three seconds of use before it dies. So watch this. I'm going to turn it on now. I'm going to go forward. And there you go. Now it's completely seized up, even though the light is still on here. The only way to get it to work again for three seconds is to turn it off and then back on again. But if I turn it on and then don't do anything for three or four seconds, it won't work at all. So it's like it's time to only work for three seconds. So watch this. I'm going to turn it on now and I'm going to do left and right. So it isn't just the motor here draining too much energy and the batteries are brand new. So turn it on and stop. Yeah. Now, if I was to turn it on and just not do anything for the same amount of time, then it won't work at all. So it's only when you turn it on, you've got motion for just a few seconds. So there you go. Now that should be long enough. Check this out. Nothing there at all. Really, really weird how we only ever have so many seconds before it will fail. What could be causing that? Who knows? Let's bring it over to the blue map and let's try and fix it. Now, this is a tea break repair, so get yourself your favorite Christmas mug available down in the description below, and let's relax over the next 10 or 15 minutes and see if we can find out what's wrong with this one here. And in case you're wondering, it's not this end here, so watch. If I turn it on here, it works, but then if I take the batteries out here, so now, seized up, yeah? If I take the batteries out here and put them back in, then it still won't work. So it seems to be more the car end. It's the car that's locked up. By taking the batteries out here, resetting this here, that hasn't fixed anything. Now this was sent in to me by Stuart from Infinite Bargains For You over on eBay and infinitebargains.co.uk. He has had a quick look at it, but he can't find uh, anything wrong with it. So he said, would I be interested? Now I know it's only a cheap item. It's not the item itself which is worth fixing. It was the the interesting aspect of the fault that I thought might be uh, might make a nice video because I think new these are probably I'm sure you can probably get these for like ten pound or fifteen pound or something like that. Oh no! Oh here we go. Right, we're in. Quite nice though, isn't it? We are in now. What have we got going on here? A lot less than I thought. Wait a minute. Oh. What's this here? Is that the aerial? Oh, that's the aerial, isn't it? Yeah. I thought that was a wire from here. Then I was thinking, well, how could the motor work if the wire was broken? Well, initially looking at it, there's definitely not anything wrong. Let's zoom in and have a look here. So the motor, I don't think is going to cause it. Unless, of course, there's something shorting in the motor. Maybe what I could do is I could take the wires off here and just put them to a voltmeter and then turn it on and see how long it lasts before the voltage drops. Could be this motor here that's faulty as well. Do you know what? I can unplug them, can't I? Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Look, I can unplug this one and see if the front wheels keep twitching. And then I can then plug that one back in and unplug the front motor one and see if the back wheels go. That's a good idea. Oh, I love stuff like this. Right, so let's pop the batteries. Well, I didn't take the batteries out, did I? Let's put the batteries back in here. Are we off? Yes, we're off. Let's take out this motor here. Now, let's see if it's going to work now or will it still cut out? So obviously forward and back's not going to work, but will left and right work? No. Turn that off and back on again. Right, so it's locked up. So there's nothing to do with the back motor. So we can unplug that. Unplug the front one. No, that's not it, is it? This is the front one here. And now let's plug this one back in. Right, and do the same again. Off, on. Is it gonna last? No, so it's not motor related. Interesting. 
it's not motor related. What is going to be causing this? Let's take this board out and let's have a look at the back and see if it makes sense. So we've got green to green, so we don't have to worry about the colors. We've got yellow to yellow, so we know where that's going to go. And this is just going to be to power it. Whoops, I took that whole thing off there, but that's fine. Right. So it's not motor related. I can't see how the switch could cause anything like that. Especially when it's not when it's not so perfect every single every single time it only lasts that amount of time. So it's going to be something on here. I'm thinking. Right, what is it on here that's causing the problem? So it looks like there's the option for LEDs. Motor, we know the motors are in the right way because when we go forward and backward, the wheels do go, and when we go left and right, the wheels turn. So I can't see anything on there that could be causing it. So now, what we got here? Anything look bad? So I think the, the fault's only gonna present itself when it's got power on it, which is awkward. But let's do a little bit of testing anyway. Right, so grounds. So we've got our grounds here. So let's just go across the caps. Right, nothing wrong with the caps as far as I can see. We've got a little inductor here. Got continuity through that. Uh, should we measure some of the resistors? Why not? Right, this is reading 330 ohms. Now, what's this going to be? One, this is going to be 1,000 ohms, isn't it? Yeah, 1,000 ohms. 470 ohms, am I right? Yeah, 470, because I think the two at the end denotes how many zeros this is. So this would be one zero and then two more zeros. This would be four seven and then one zero, so four seven zero. So this is gonna again be a thousand ohms here, which it is, 998, and this one's gonna be 390. I think that's a three. Yeah, 393. So they're all okay. Is it chip related? Can't see any bad soldering anywhere. Just double check, there's nothing on the top here apart from the crystal. Could the crystal be faulty? Would the crystal cause it to cut out after so many seconds? Uh, well, the thing is, it's not gonna be like a power sort of surge issue with something getting too hot, because even before pressing the motor or anything, it cuts out, it's just purely a timing thing. Should we check for shorts on this transistor, just in circuit? Right, so that's in the mega ohms, that's in the mega ohms, that is completely open, completely open. That is a thousand ohms and a thousand ohms. Check for shorts on the chip, maybe. Right. Short there, but that looks normal, doesn't it? That's not going anywhere. That's going to be a, that's going to be ground. Let's try this one. Now that's not soldered there, is it? 
Should that be soldered there? Let's see if there's any other ground in this chip. No, maybe not, because on this one here... Hold on now. I wonder does this one need... See, this is soldered here, but that's not doing anything. But neither is that. That's not grounded there. I wonder whether or not that needs to be grounded. Because look, that is grounded there, but not here. The chip itself isn't grounded. Look, that is, but not there. And yet this one here, which also looks like a ground, that isn't ground. I'm going to try to put a dot of solder on that, just in case. Just in case it's that chip that's faulty. You never know. Let's add a tiny bit of solder onto here. Let's see now if the chip has continuity to ground. So here, now let's go on the top. We have. Right, let's just see if that has made any difference. I mean, I don't think it has, but that's the only thing I can see that's wrong. Obviously, there could be something wrong with the chips themselves or that crystal. What do you think? you think that's going to have made a difference? I think mm, no. Right, let's go. Ooh. Oh, here we go, that wasn't in. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Yes! That was it! Unbelievable! What? The chip wasn't grounded! Now that is a mistake out of the factory! Oh wow, look at... What a perfect tea break repair. I think that might be my most favorite one to date. What a perfect little fault. Why was that missed in the factory? I think they, let's have another look. I think they soldered up the wrong one. Right, so if we go here onto that ground there, you can see that this side was soldered, but there's no ground pad underneath it. This side had the ground pad, but it wasn't soldered, so the ground wasn't getting into the chip. It's weird that it worked for a few seconds though. One interesting fault. Right, I am gonna pop this back together and let's finish off with it racing around the kitchen. Ah, oh, so enjoyable. Do you know what I just wanna see? When we go forward, I wanna see if there's power on those LED ones. See how easy it would be to put lights on it. I presume one's gonna be for reverse, one's gonna be for forward. Yes, look at that, reverse, four volts. How good is that? Four volts for reverse, so I presume this one's gonna be forward. There you go, three volts. And forward, yeah. So you could add LEDs to this. have to make a little hole through here to add LEDs in. This is all blacked out as well, so there's not much opportunity really. Well, saying that, that you have got glass here and here, so you could add little LEDs in. Some of you are wanting me to do that, aren't you? It's a tea break repair though, I don't think I've got the time. Also, I wonder whether the resistors and stuff are in place. Is it just plug and play from here, straight onto wires, or would there have to be resistors on the wires? I bet it's just plug and play, you know. Right, I'm gonna give it a go. 
I've got my old Christmas lights. I've got a big bundle of them here. Some are white, some are blue. I'm just gonna go for the white ones because the lights at the back will hopefully make them light up red anyway. Now, let me zoom right in. I'm gonna do them in parallel. So small to small, big to big, and then wire this into this one here. Not sure which way round I have to do it. I'll just do it both ways until one works. So I'll tap them here. If it doesn't work, I'll swap them over. Let me zoom in to show you the actual LED. Can you see? We have a small bit and a big bit. So if I put the red lead to the small bit, it lights up. These are all a bit rusty because they're just outdoor Christmas lights. There we go. Right, so leave it with me and then I'll uh, hopefully have something working at the end. Right, just a quick update. I've done the front lights now. So I've just made a little hole on the inside there and there, not on the outside, just on the inside. And there are my LEDs. They're too big to actually face down, you know, into that way. So it's just kind of going to be a sort of glow coming out of the lights. It looks a mess with the glue gun, but look, professionally, this is how it left the factory anyway with glue gun here. So I think that that is going to be okay. Now I have to, I haven't got any of these connectors, so I am going to have to solder these straight on to the connectors, which isn't ideal. In fact, what I'll probably do is solder them onto the board underneath. And uh, I've left quite a bit of slack on there. So you'll still be able to undo the screws and then lift it off here. Just to show you them working. Yeah. Remember it's very bright in here at the moment, but you can see them going on and off there. Right, and that's the back lights done. So what I've done is I've just knocked out the third little light at the end there. In real life, that might well be the indicator, not too sure. And then when I put that back in there, hopefully it will shine through the red. So you can see now, I've got my meter and diode test just to put a little bit of voltage into the wires. Is it this way around? Yeah, there we go, right. So you can see them lighting up there now. So now I need to solder these onto the bottom of the board and we are finished. Interesting, look at this. The front lights were flashing just then. Maybe when you turn it on, it, uh, it takes a little while to pair up, watch. Look, oh, now that's nice. Now watch, and then, so that must be the initial pairing up. Ho oh, ho, that's pretty nice, isn't it? Right, it appears to be working, so let's put the cover back on and uh, take it for a test ride. Okay, so let's do it in darkness to begin with. Watch this, forward and reverse. There, so you can see it is slightly red, but not really. You need to use red LEDs to truly get the brake lights to look like uh, brake lights, but, if you want to play it in the dark now, you have got an option. Right, let's turn the lights on. So as far as the actual toy itself is concerned, it looks nice, but it's not proportional. So you're only gonna have so much fun with it. The biggest problem isn't in this instance, the proportional steering or the lack of proportional steering. It's the turning circles, massive. Look at this. I can only just about get it round the uh, kitchen. And when I start accelerating and the circle gets a little bit bigger, there you go. You see, it just doesn't, uh, it doesn't make it round, see? And that's not nothing to do with the trim. That is just uh, lack of turning. Which is a shame. The model itself does look nice though. So if you wanted a little model car off a Lamborghini, it's just a bonus the fact that it's radio controlled. So that to me is a perfect tea brake repair. So a massive thumbs up to Stuart for sending that out to me. So if you enjoyed it, please give it a massive thumbs up and subscribe for more tea brake repairs and also trying to fix videos. Take care everyone.